In this presentation, we're going to be discussing the efficient machining of 3D parts. So first of all, let's take a look at the agenda for this presentation. So the first thing that we are going to be discussing is we're going to give an introduction to 3D machining. We're going to take a look at the pros and we're going to take a look at the cons of 3D machining on a CNC machine. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can machine 3D parts more efficiently. So rather than go ahead uh, and 3D machine the whole of a part, we're going to look at how we can dissect our 3D part into lots of different toolpaths which will make the machining a lot quicker, it will be more efficient and we'll also get a nicer quality finish. So that means we'll have less uh, hand finishing as well. So once we've had a look at how we can machine more efficiently, then we're going to take a look at what to look for uh, in our 3D project so that we know exactly how we can go ahead and machine that more efficiently. After that we're going to go ahead and summarize everything that we've covered within this presentation and then you can go ahead and watch the accompanying videos of the rose and crown sign and the guitar bass where we go ahead and put this method into practice. So let's take a look at the pros and cons of 3D machining. So first we'll start with the pros. So the good thing about 3D machining is that it's a good way to recreate organic, free-flowing and decorative shapes on a CNC machine. The cons, however, is the fact that the toolpaths are very time-consuming. And the fact is, if we have any small detail within our 3D project, we need to also use a very fine tool, which is also then going to add to the already time-consuming 3D toolpath that we can create. So, how do we go about machining more efficiently? So first of all, we need to make sure that we're picking the most appropriate tool for our job. So the largest tool that I can get away with whilst cutting out my 3D part, the better off I am going to be, because the more material I can remove at a given path, uh, the more time I will save in the long run. So if we take this sign for instance, you can see that it's got a 3D object that's been placed in the centre of this sign. What we could do here is rather than 3D machine the whole of this oval area in the centre of the sign, what we could do is we could actually break that down into a different toolpath. So we could actually use a pocketing toolpath with a large end mill to actually go around and uh, machine this material away here. And once we've actually got that tool in the CNC machine, we could actually use that then to pocket the rest of this sign around the text as well. And we could even use a smaller tool to then go around and clean up the area as well. So we could use the larger clearance uh, tool option within the pocketing toolpath. And we will go on to that in just a short while as well. The next thing that we can think about is picking the right shape tool for the job. So you see these uh, two different 3D objects here. The first one we could use uh, a large ball nose tool because as you can see we've got long flowing sweeping shapes across the entire 3D object so we can get away with using a larger uh, tool for that. Whereas the 3D object on the right hand side you can see there's a lot of intricate detail so we would need uh, a smaller ball nose tool to actually recreate those shapes. So picking the right shape tool for the job as well as the size of the tool for the job is also very important to uh, 3D machining more efficiently. Next, we need to think about making sure that we are picking the most appropriate toolpath strategies and vector boundaries for our job. So as you can see here, we've got a, a sign that has a 3D object placed in the center of that. Now you could 3D machine the whole of that, including the text which has been placed also in a pocket and also the text up here and the border as well. We could just set the whole thing to run as a 3D toolpath. Now how about we actually think about using different toolpaths and creating boundaries to uh, just section off where we actually only want to cut with that specific toolpath. So really we only want to cut 3D parts with the 3D finishing toolpath. So as you can see highlighted in red in the picture there, that is really the only area where we actually need to use the 3D finishing toolpath in. Then we can think about using the 2D and 2.5D type toolpaths to finish the rest. So the text, as you can see, that's now highlighted in green. We could use a pocketing toolpath and then we could also V-carve that text afterwards. Then the welcome text that's above the 3D object, we could just V-carve that as well. And then we could profile 
uh, with a V bit the border around this shape as well and then obviously we can go ahead and cut that out with just a standard profiling toolpath as well. So that covers basically how we can machine more efficiently. So we've looked at using uh, the right sized tool, we've looked at using the right shape tool and we've also now looked at using the most appropriate toolpath strategies and uh, vector boundaries to help us create those uh, more efficient toolpaths. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what we need to be looking out for in our own 3D projects to help us machine more efficiently. So whilst looking at our own 3D projects, we could be looking out for flat areas, which we could actually use a pocketing toolpath instead of allowing the 3D toolpath itself to create the flat areas. Not only would we get a much nicer finish with a pocketing toolpath, but we'd also save a lot of time uh, in 3D machining so we would first of all think about creating some vector boundaries around the inner border here and around these shapes. Now those can be easily created within the software and we will demonstrate that in the accompanying videos as well. And basically we, we, we would just create a pocketing toolpath between the inner border here and the 3D objects which would remove all this material around the 3D objects and also in between these two borders and the text here. Now we could also utilize the use larger area clearance tool uh, option within the pocketing toolpath so we could use a larger end mill to begin with and then go ahead and tidy that up afterwards with a smaller end mill as well. Next we want to be looking out for any text that's on our 3D project. So rather than actually let the 3D machining toolpath itself recreate that text for us we'd get a much nicer finish and uh, it'd be a lot faster to machine also if we used a v-carving or a prism toolpath to actually recreate that text. So we'd use the v-carving for anything that's sunken into the material and we'd use a prism toolpath if it was raised above the material as well. Other things that we could look out for, now this is quite a specialised case, but if we have any borders that go around our 3D project, we could actually think about using a shaped cutting tool rather than actually 3D cut the border shape itself. Now it may not, you may not get uh, an exact tool which will replicate the 3D shape that we've created in our border shape, but we can also think about the fact that it is going to be a nicer finish on the border because it's been cut with uh, a shape tool and it will also be a lot faster to machine as well. Then we can think about uh, if we've got any holes that in our 3D projects. So for instance, when we come to demonstrate the guitar, we've got a few holes in there for our volume knobs. And we can think about rather than 3D cutting those, we could uh, use a drilling or a pocketing toolpath to accomplish those. Now, not only will we get a much ac more accurate and nicer finish on those, but also we'll save time again, uh, not 3D machining those holes. We also want to be looking out for any slots, outlines or cutouts that we can achieve with a 2D profile toolpath. So this internal border shape, for instance, we could achieve with a V-bit tool and a profile toolpath. And also anything that we're cutting out, we ideally want to be using a profile toolpath because we will achieve a nicer finish. So that means less hand finishing. So what we're trying to achieve here is the fact that we want to be utilizing other toolpaths like the 2D and 2.5D toolpaths which are much faster to machine and they also give a much better finish than a 3D uh, toolpath. So we only really want to be machining 3D objects and nothing else. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at a visual example of a guitar bass. Now we are going to actually do a demonstration on this in one of the accompanying videos. So just as a quick example, let's take this guitar bass for instance Rather than 3D machine all these holes and all these pickup slots and the neck slots, uh, we can actually utilize some 2D and 2.5D type toolpaths. So, first of all, the pickups and the neck slot can be done with a 2D pocketing toolpath. All we would need to do is create a vector boundary around this area uh, and 2D toolpath them. Then we've got these holes which are for the volume knobs. They could be done with a 2D drilling toolpath. And then we've also got the cutout pass of this guitar. We can actually do that with a profile cutout. Then we just have the rest of the guitar remaining to 
use a 3D toolpath. So anything that we cannot achieve with a 2D or 2.5D type toolpath, we want to actually then utilize the 3D toolpath. So to summarize, what we need to be thinking about whilst we're creating our 3D project and um, thinking about the toolpaths that we're going to apply is we need to choose the most efficient approach towards our job. So first of all, that would mean choosing the most appropriate size and shaped tool, pick the right toolpath strategy, make use of vector boundaries, and this will give us a whole host of benefits. So it's going to be faster to machine, which means we're going to get more profits because we spent less time machining. We're going to have a higher quality finish, so we're going to have to do less hand finishing. And the software provides us all the tools to actually help us machine 3D more efficiently. The only thing that we need to think about is we need to balance the time between setting up efficient machining versus actually machining and hand finishing itself. If you would like to go ahead and try this new method of machining 3D more efficiently, you can join me and watch the accompanying videos of the Rosen Crown sign and the guitar bass as well. Thank you for watching.